Fighting rust plays a big role in rebuilding an old steel ship, because parts that are difficult to reach are usually neglected during its lifetime. The advantage of that is that these rusty parts are easy to identify and a rebuild is the ideal time to attack the rust and make it easy to prevent in the future. My name is Gijs and this is my dad. And this is Schooner Tigerai. We have recently started a major rebuild to get her ready for new adventures. And we are sharing the process with you. Subscribe to stay tuned. The current anchor hose pipes are made of repurposed oxygen bottles. Because they are thick walled, had the right diameter and were cheap and easy to come by 50 years ago. The inside however is not very resistant to corrosion. And since you cannot paint the inside when the anchor or the chain is in the way, they are always rusty. Now that the anchors are off, this is the moment to replace those old rusty pipes. But it's not a small job. To get out the pipes, first the anchor stoppers have to be removed. Apart from replacing the rusty pipes, we also want to prevent rust in the future. How are we going to do that? Easy. Use stainless steel pipes. That way the inside of the pipes will never rust. Sounds good, but there is a catch. Using two different kinds of metal on a ship can cause bimetallic corrosion. This process, also called galvanic corrosion, happens because the two metals have different electrode potentials. And when these metals come into contact with an electrolyte, like salt water, a small electric current starts running, causing the more anodic metal, steel, to corrode, and the more noble metal, stainless steel, to remain unaffected. Another point of attention is the type of electrode used when welding stainless steel. We are using a 309 transition rod, which helps to avoid cracking of the materials. So how do we make sure that the rest of the ship doesn't corrode away around the new stainless steel hose pipes? As said before, the current only starts running when the metals are in contact with an electrolyte. So if we can protect the steel and the welds from coming into contact with seawater, we are in the clear. A good coating will do the trick. The stainless steel doesn't necessarily have to be painted and the anchor chain running through the hose pipes will wear off the paint very quickly. But we're giving it a layer anyways, even if it's just cosmetic. Now that that's done, we can finally hang the anchors back in position.
On the aft deck, we have a multifunctional capstan, which can be used to either pull the ship towards the key or for a stern anchor on a line instead of an anchor chain. However, somewhere in the past months, the electromotor was accidentally switched on while the capstan was covered under a tarpaulin, causing it to overheat. Apart from that, the drums are not turning anymore when the electromotor is switched on. We have to look into that and make it work again. The electromotor is fried, and before we can investigate more, we have to take it off. That straight away revealed the problem. The complete shaft of the electromotor has broken off inside the gearbox. The broken off part is quite stuck, so we need to make a little something to get it out. The bottom of the gearbox is one of those hard to reach spots that get neglected and very rusty. So this is the moment to give it some love and make it easier to maintain. The rest of the gearbox can do with some maintenance as well. I noticed the gearbox was leaking some oil through the shaft seal. Luckily these oil seals have a universal code so I can easily order a new one from the internet even if the used one is 40 years old. One problem with the old electromotor was that it was turning a bit fast. Meaning you have to run it to put tension on the line and then quickly stop it again to let it come off tension. Since we are replacing the setup anyways, we can solve that now and make it so that we can just slowly reel in a line. To get it to turn at half speed, 
we are installing an extra gearbox and a smaller electromotor. We are also installing a new foundation, because rust had gotten the better part of the old one. The new one is higher so that the inside of the foundation and the bottom of the gearbox can be reached for maintenance. After a good coating, the whole contraption can be assembled. Since the whole capstan has been raised a bit with the new foundation, we noticed that it looks a bit more fragile than before. To protect it and to prevent people from sitting on top of the motor or the gearbox, we are making a bench on top of the whole capstan. The frame of the bench will be one of these parts that is hard to reach for rust removal and painting. So we will make it out of stainless steel. It is not uncommon to keep stainless steel unpainted and have it visible for the world to see. But we use it more for practical reasons than as a fashion statement, so there is no need to keep it visible. You may have noticed that there is a number on the sides and on the transom of the ship. This is our European number of identification, which is required for all ships sailing on inland waters with a block volume of more than 100 cubic meters. And it has to be there for our 5 yearly survey that is due in 7 weeks. Maintenance around this number is always a hassle, because whenever there is a speck of rust, after repainting the number has to be touched up with a small paintbrush. For the ship's name this is easy, because the letters are welded onto the hull, but for the ENI number it isn't. To make our lives easier we decided to route the number into some water resistant plywood, which can be installed on the railing. As you can see, fine motor skills are not really my strong suit. Luckily they don't have to be. The boards can be sanded down after coloring in the new number and with the final layer of varnish they hopefully will last for some years out in the open. The strips holding the boards in place are again one of those things that we can't paint with the boards in place. So here as well we are using stainless steel. but. No one has to know. The old numbers can be painted over and if we ever have any rust in the future it will be easy to tackle. We are well on the way to be ready for our dry dock period and ship survey in 7 weeks. Although there is still a lot more to prepare. But that's for another time. And this is all for now. If you have any questions or remarks, please let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.